Today on this episode of Devil's Advocate, there is a black beast heading to Brazil. What were on the rise of finance? Derek Lewis takes on Jelton Almeida, stepping in for Curtis Blades, who is unfortunately out of the fight with an injury. Uh, we've got a heavyweight main event, and I am going to be arguing why Derek Lewis can pull off this crazy upset on short notice in Brazil against one of the biggest prospects in MMA. I was going to say from Brazil, but Jelton Almeida is a scary dude. Let's get this over. <laughs> Let's start with Jelton Almeida briefly. Um, everyone knows where his, his strength is. He has 12 of his 21 wins by submission. Hasn't lost a fight since 2018. Is on a pretty scary win streak in the UFC. But I was very interested in this fight with Curtis Blades. I didn't do originally a devil's advocate for this episode because I didn't feel like either way there was particularly exciting and compelling arguments to make. Um, I think there was pretty good arguments for both guys and that isn't really the point of this. If I wanted to do a breakdown show, if you guys wanted to listen to breakdowns, you can go and listen to Dan Hardy do them because that is what I do anyway. Uh, that man is a genius and, and I just like to come up with silly arguments that kind of make sense but also kind of don't need to be said. Is that the series? I don't know. Don't worry about what I'm doing. But Derek Lewis is a fun one. I didn't expect Derek Lewis taking short notice main events. I, this is a thing, I guess. And he's going to Brazil. The people of Brazil seeing Derek Lewis... What an experience that must be. I don't know how to chat or No, I'm like English. What do you say? I don't think that there is any debate in saying that the Curtis Blades matchup was a lot more difficult for Jailton Almeida. You don't get many elite grapplers in the heavyweight division. So when you've got a submission specialist and he's matched up with probably the best... Well, John Jones is probably the best wrestler in the heavyweight division, but Curtis Blades is bigger just you know sheer size so Curtis Blades probably the most scary grappler is he John Jones oh, come on! anyway this is beside the point John Jones is fighting on a different date uh I'm sure we'll have a video talking about that at some point in the near future Curtis Blades is one of the most difficult matchups in the division for Jelton Almeida and one that I was really excited to see him test um, himself against because what happens if he can't take down Curtis Blades? Well, then he has to stand with him. And this happens a lot where people go, oh, you've got to stand with Curtis Blades. Well, he's not that good of a striker. And then he knocks them out in one punch. So I was very excited to see that fight. And instead, we have a very different proposition on our hands with Derek Lewis. Because simply put, in fact, I'm going to pull up Derek Lewis's Wikipedia right now because it has an absolutely fantastic description of Derek Lewis. If you were going to explain, I don't think many fighters' Wikipedia pages have this, by the way. Maybe I'm wrong, but I go on a lot of fighters' Wikipedia pages when I need to find out information. Under fighting style for Derek Lewis, I'm going to read this word for word. Lewis has been characterized as a classic heavyweight owing to his knockout power and physique. Former welterweight title contender and analyst Dan Hardy described him as a wrecking ball. Lewis greatly prefers stand-up fighting, which he refers to as swanging and banging. Uh, important, important information here. Uh, and has been noted by fans and commentators for a surprising ability to seemingly shrug off the grappling wrestling offense of his opponents while in the bottom position and simply stand up. And that is where we are starting this video. Derek Lewis and the art of just stand up. And wear down the big black beast, Derek Lewis. I think that Derek Lewis is a fascinating fighter that will be studied for years to come. Um, not only is he absolutely hilarious, of course, but you only have to search Derek Lewis stand-up into YouTube and there are multiple compilations of people taking him down and him just standing up. And he's going to look to it again. This is a different angle to attack the shoulder. Derek Lewis wants to stand up. What's he going to do? He's just going to stand yeah. up. It, it, like, as much of a, of a meme as it is among the MMA fans, he's done it multiple times in multiple fights against 
legit grapplers. Maybe not grapplers as scary as a Jailton Almeida, but some tough guys, some some legit, well, I say legit heavyweights. I mean big dudes. When I say legit heavyweights, I don't mean Cyril Gann. I mean big dudes. And the other thing about Derek Lewis is I think that you go, oh, well, he just gets taken down and beaten up and he gasses out and stuff. And it's like, he th- that really doesn't happen that much to Derek Lewis. Um, admittedly, he did get mauled on the ground by Spivak. Um, and that worries me in this fight. But, you know, I'm not here to argue for Jelton Almeida. So we'll put that one to the side for the time being. And yeah, he got thrown around by Daniel Cormier but that's Daniel Cormier he does that to every heavyweight like that's levels we're talking about Jelton Almeida here who this is probably the toughest test of his career even though it isn't Curtis Blades which is a way tougher matchup for him than Derek Lewis is especially a Derek Lewis on short notice who has three weeks to prepare and he needs to go to Brazil I have no idea how Derek Lewis's cardio is going to be what shape he's going to be I don't know and all the sex I've been getting yeah, my body needs some time off. He hasn't actually fared that badly against grapplers in the past. Um, I mean, you can just look at his recent losses. Cyril Gann, Pavlovich, Taito Avassa, all guys that st- stood and traded with him, which is crazy because Derek, that's what Derek Lewis is famous for. But I think the difference there is that the, the three names I just mentioned are faster than him. Um, is Jelton Almeida faster than Derek Lewis? Probably, yeah. He, he's a pretty crazy athlete and Derek Lewis has looked good and then bad no no don't and then looked very good in his last fight where he landed a flying knee in the first few seconds and rebounded from a three fight losing streak but how will Derek Lewis's just stand up tactics work against Jelton Almeida I don't know because no one else does it (laughs) <laughs> it's as simple as that i don't know um if i was gonna argue if somebody the whole point of this series and i say it in the intro of all the other videos but not this one because i forgot um is if somebody came up to me somebody went hey you're an mma fan how do you think Derek lewis can beat Jelton almeida on three weeks notice in brazil i'd go he could just stand up it's a real thing yeah. that's the first point the second point is about Derek Lewis uh, and his good performances versus his bad performances. Of course, that losing streak of Pavlovich to Ivasa and Spivak was bad. But I don't see that happening in this fight. And Derek Lewis is a strange one in the... I don't want to say that he's a, a streaky fighter. And what I mean by that is somebody that gets a win and then that win, you know, they they they're a momentum fighter because you can't really say that based on his wins and losses but he is definitely a fighter that when he is in the moment and enjoying it to the fullest potential that's when he's dangerous i just said let me throw some if it lands and i did It, it landed perfect and will he feel that pressure that he has felt fighting in texas which has become a bit of a meme at this point he has lost uh, his last three fights in a row in you know fighting in front of his home crowd in texas is he gonna feel that kind of pressure going out to brazil and fighting jelton almeida i don't know the problem is, is is he just doing this to get paid or you know has he been offered a lot of money to step in and take this fight on late notice he probably has but you know Derek Lewis fights for money anyway, and there's no, you know, there's no kidding <laughs> around that fact anyway. I just think another another point that I would, would go to is that Derek Lewis is probably not going to feel any pressure going into this one. He's been beaten by up-and-coming contenders before. He's come back from it. He's coming off of a great knockout win. What has he got to lose fighting Jelton Almeida? Um... And I, I'm sure that, you know, if you were to ask UFC fans, they would probably say well, he probably needs this win in order to, to stay high up in the rankings, given his recent form. But if you ask Derek Lewis, I think he'd probably just shrug his shoulders. But he, I mean, he does do that to a lot of questions, in fairness. You're going to have to excuse my French, but fuck you and fuck him. The final thing to talk about, of course, he's the UFC leader in knockout victories, is the one-punch power. The fight that I went back... Of course, you could watch highlights for days of Derek Lewis's knockouts. Everyone knows that when he lands, he can put you out. Um, 
I, I, that's obvious. If you were going to say, how is Derek Lewis going to win this fight? He's not going to win the decision over five rounds. He's going to knock him out. Everybody knows that. But the interesting thing, I think, with why you could say specifically in this fight is Jailton Almeida is probably going to shoot for a takedown. And we haven't really seen this in his career too much because, again, Derek Lewis doesn't really... You don't get many grapplers in the heavyweight division and you don't get many that reach the kind of upper uh, upper tier. So Derek Lewis hasn't fought a ton of them, at least not in recent years. But the fight that, of course, you have to look at is his fight versus Curtis Blades, who, of course, was supposed to be fighting Jelton Almeida originally. Because Curtis Blades is a fantastic wrestler, but I, I think that... Especially in this fight against Derek Lewis, he, he got a little bit impatient when he didn't need to and he shot too early. And Derek Lewis timed that uppercut. One of the best heavyweight knockouts in UFC history, I think. The way that he kind of like lands it and then just shrugs him off. Derek Lewis, man. One of a kind. But it's a perfect shot. And at the end of the day, you know, when... <laughs> When Derek Lewis is making his walkout and it cuts to the commentary and they're talking about Derek Lewis's keys to victory, how he can win this fight, they're not going to be saying, oh, he can just stand up. They're not going to be saying, oh, he's not fighting in Texas for a change. They're going to say, Derek Lewis has one punch knockout power. Everyone's excited about Jelton Almeida, but we probably don't know just how good he is yet. And we don't know how his experience compares to especially a guy like Derek Lewis because he's been around in the UFC for quite some time now. If Jelton Almeida makes a mistake, if the moment in Brazil gets to him, of course, you know, main eventing and uh, in front of the Brazil fans that are obviously going to go crazy for him, we need to find out Jelton Almeida's resolve, how he does under pressure because if there is any glimpse of him hesitating or making it too obvious when he's going for a takedown. Derek Lewis has the potential to knock him out, and it isn't just like every other heavyweight. It's not like when he fights, you know, when Jelton Almeida fights a guy in his UFC debut, and you go, oh, this guy could knock him out. He's got one punch power. He's in the heavyweight division. Of course he does. Derek Lewis has exceptional power, even for the heavyweight division, right? So it's an escalated risk. is isn't just like, oh, well, he could catch him. It's like, well, Jelton Almeida could finish Derek Lewis, but there's a reason why the odds of Derek Lewis finishing him will be, like, by a knockout, will be way higher than Almeida doing the same to him, and vice versa for submission for Almeida. Derek Lewis will probably get taken down in this fight. I think that's... That statement, how how likely would you say that is of happening? Probably if they, if they fought... If they fought ten times, how many times does Jelton Almeida take him down in, in, in those ten, like... How many of those does he land a takedown in those 10 fights? Probably, like, I would say, like, seven. But those three, there's either one where Jelton Al... There's probably one in there where Jelton Almeida just outstrikes him. I'm going to be honest. And there's two where Derek Lewis knocks him out. But when it's Derek Lewis, that possibility is always so exciting because he's done it so many times against Curtis Blades... I would have said there's one time where he knocks him out and he did it against Alexander Volkov. After watching those two and a half rounds, you would have said there's one scenario out of 10 where he lands a knockout shot to win this fight after losing every single second of it up to that point, And he does it. Derek Lewis delivers, man. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Uh, that is this episode of Devil's Advocate trying to break down how Derek Lewis can pull off the unthinkable. I mean, I'm going to watch the fight. Like, hopefully I've at least convinced you to maybe before if you were going, I don't know, Derek Lewis, has he really got a chance of winning? Hopefully at least I've convinced you to tune into the fight just in case because it would be pretty incredible and you know that Derek Lewis will deliver on the mic, if nothing else. Thank you for checking out this episode of Devil's Advocate. This was a weird one to do, <laughs> but we'll get back to, you know, legit arguments <laughs> in a in a little bit on a, on a future episode. Let me know in the comments how you think this one's going to go. Let us know which fights you want to see covered on Devil's Advocate. And uh, I'll catch you on the next episode for some big time fights. Some very, very big fights. Literally. Swing in, baby. Ace town on that ball.